We are taping. We just finished taping here, and uh, it's good to see everybody. Welcome. Welcome, Prayer Partners. Good to see you. Uh, if you're joining us, good to have you here. We've got a lot of people on already, and I'm, I'm glad to say I'm on Bible Discovery TV, which is where I'm always at. It's the Bible Discovery Online Church section, and you can get to it by going to Bible Discovery TV and click on Prayer, and then click on Live Link, and it takes you to the place where you can see where we are, and uh, you can join us and type in and put all your stuff there. Matt's there, Betty's there, Gina's there, Gina, Alicia's there. So I see a lot of people here already, and that's really, really good. Um, one of the things that I want to do is read this scripture, because this is Psalm 133 as we begin today. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. Unity is one purpose. Christians have one purpose, and that purpose is to explain and teach people about Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> we share our testimony. We teach about Jesus Christ, but that doesn't mean the people will follow. And we're not responsible for the people following. That's their free will. But God is not willing that any perish. And, and we introduce Jesus Christ so that he can actually involve himself with them. And let me just say that I, I read yesterday uh, an activity of someone who was put to death in the United Church of Canada. They did the, the death thing, the legalism or the legalized um, killing of people. And, you know, she was somebody who, who it seems as if was, was trying to figure out her faith and all of that, and she just didn't want to live anymore. And so she, they brought the medical team in, and she was sitting in the church, and her daughters were around, and everybody was around, and, you know, they, they stood with her as she died. And she was legally injected, and away you go. I mean, it's just incredible. So unity is when everybody agrees. God, God is the giver of life. God is the one who gives life. And we do not have the right to take life away. That's the issue for Christians is God has given us life. And the 20th verse of Exodus chapter 20, or the 13th verse of Exodus chapter 20, is important. It says, thou shalt not murder. And what it means is that we are not, in, we are instructed that we don't have dominion over each other. Genesis 1.26 tells us that, that God did not give us dominion over everybody else but he gave his dominion over the animals and the plants of this there the plants and the gardens and the sea and all of that so behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity so believers in jesus christ have this unity about life it is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard the beard of aaron running down on the edge of his garments it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing of life. There the Lord commanded the blessing of life. Forevermore. You see, God is the one who has the control over life. Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed for man once to die and then face judgment. It's God, God who knows these things. And we need to pay attention to the Lord. Hi, Matt. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing good. It's Friday. I'm ready to pray. That's excellent. Very good. And uh, let me just say, Matt, that we also had uh, some headlines on CBN News. Franklin Graham said that... Um, he said about the recent decision regarding the Supreme Court uh, decision, um, Frank Graham said it's murder. Oppose Biden's use of God to defend abortion rights. What? Well, and you know, Ron, I, I was watching, um, I, uh, I watch, I don't watch mainstream news almost ever, but I will watch Tucker Carlson. And he had on, I believe he had on Lila Rose, who's been working in the, the pro-life movement for a long time. And she said, I forgot what percentage she put on it. I want to say she said 90%. And then she stated this was very interesting. She said, uh, 
again, I think it was 90%. Lois would have been at 75%, but it was up there, right? She said of people, whether they were secular or Christian, it didn't matter. After she explained exactly what abortion is, exactly what they do to that infant, that child that hasn't been born yet, she said that 75 to 90% of them, whether Christian or not, changed their mind and became pro-life. Right there live on Tucker Carlson. So um, that's something, because I think a lot of people are just um, ignorant. I, I, I really do. I, I, I agree with you. And I, I just, I'm just surprised by, and to be honest with you, the, the, I mean, the president of the United States, like what, what is that? I mean, come on. I have no idea what you're saying. I've got Fox News. I've got, I've got CBN News. And of course there's CNN, the cable negative news network. I've got that. I, you know, I watch CNN and uh, as much as I can, and I watch Fox News, and I watch CBN, and I watch, and then I've got a number of people here in the uh, Telegram. I've got some specific people in Israel and other places that uh, give us news and give us what's going on and what God's doing. So, you know, we're, we're on top of this, and we're staying on it, and I'm just so surprised because this reaction I was 1973. I was around. I was a young kid, 12 years old, when they made that decision, and uh, and I just said uh, at the time I didn't know what was going on, but I don't remember it being like this. I'll tell you, it's really something. Anyway, I trust and I believe in life, and um, and I just read an article in in a Christian Post magazine about a Canadian article about somebody who uh, killed themselves in a church and the church blessed it and all that stuff. And I'm telling you, I don't know what kind of church that is now. I know what kind they were, but I don't know what they are now because they've obviously changed their thinking. So life is something that we have to respect God on. I mean, that's just the way it is. And that's how we see it here. Okay, so very good. How you doing, Rebecca, or Rachel? I am doing well. Thank you. And I'm in the chat today. If you guys have any prayer requests that we can be praying for, pop those into the chat and we'll pray for them a little bit later on. Okay, very good. Now, you know how to get to the chat, don't you, on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you, Facebook and YouTube, for allowing us to use our service to, uh, you know, to, to, be, to make our opinions known here and all of that. Now, if some reason Facebook cuts us off or YouTube cuts us off, I can tell you where to find us, BibleDiscoveryTV.com. BibleDiscoveryTV.com, BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Go there, click on prayer, and then click on the live link, and we're there. we got a live link that's independent of anything else. And it's our link, and we're going to do there whatever we need to do. But I'm just um, at the point where I'm wondering why in the world this is happening and these kinds of things are taking place. Uh, anyway, we need to pray. And the persecuted church, we pray every morning in the in the uh, devotions for the persecuted church. Who do we pray for this morning, Matt? Ron, we prayed for Myanmar, which previously in years past was Burma. And um, the reason we prayed for that, well, I, I'll tell you, most mornings I pray about, Lord, who should we pray for? This caught my eye yesterday, but I just felt the leading we prayed for Vietnam yesterday. Today was Myanmar. And uh, there's an article, I, I love this website, it's called Mission Network News, and it, it really gives you behind the scenes because none of us has the time or the abilities to travel around the world, especially the, to the persecuted nations, and get you firsthand reports. So it's great that we have the sites like this to give us reports uh, from ministries and missionaries that are actually there. This is the title of this article. Now, this article was just done uh, yesterday, May 5th. So here it is. Here's the title. Military burns down over 100 villages in Myanmar. And I'll read a small section of it. Myanmar. The military junta in Myanmar has burned down over 100 villages since the start of the year. So that's just this year. Satellite photos have confirmed the use of arson against over 6,000 civilian buildings. Armed forces have also demolished about 100 churches and other religious structures, one report says. Also, 39 Buddhists, uh, monastics have been killed and 40 imprisoned since the coup began in February of 2021. Greg Kelly with World Mission says, quote, they're going into these villages, destroying them, burning huts to the ground, raping women and killing people. We identified about two 
hundred families that our team is working with right now. These people need the basics. They need food, shelter, clothing, blankets, and medicine. Quote, we've been able to provide for all 200 families. We brought them to safety. Now they're in, tra in a training center that World Mission has established. One more paragraph. The strategy comes as the anti-coup resistance gains traction in Myanmar and as many soldiers desert their posts. In fact, an underground network of civilians is helping soldiers and police officers defect from their positions and flee to safety. To fight the military, civilians around the country have organized and armed themselves, often with the help of pre-existing missions. So, you know, what's happening, it's really interesting. Um, and maybe that's not a strong enough word, but you've actually got some of these soldiers and these police who have been told to, to commit these atrocities and they're getting away. They don't want to do it. And the ministry's pulling them, saving them, pulling them aside and giving them the truth of the gospel. It's amazing. And I think it's important for us to pray for this. And I'm going to have Rachel, uh, the website for Missions Network News, which I want to recommend to people is uh, mnnonline.org, mnnonline.org. Uh, there you go, Rachel, just put it in the Bible Discovery TV. That's Missions Network News. For those who want to get a hold of it, uh, they give you news uh, about the world and what's going on. That's another group that we uh, are covering on and uh, we keep track of. We have to keep track of about seven or eight or nine places. And uh, Missions Network News is always good. Uh, they keep track. So I would recommend that uh, you save that and go there and read that from time to time to get in touch with what God is doing. So that's good. We need to pray for this country and we need to pray for what God is doing. We heard you, Matt. Go ahead and pray, Matt. Father God, uh, Lord, thank you for what you're doing in a country that uh, was known for such a long time as Burma is now Myanmar. Lord, there's been a civil war, a conflict in this country since uh, beginning of last year, Father. And Lord, you've seen all the destruction, the atrocities, Lord, and so many people now, 100 villages burn. Lord God, that means they're displaced. Uh, very few of us, maybe some of us here, can understand what that means. Lord, losing everything physically. Lord, yes, that means we rely on you completely, which we, we need to do anyway. But Father God, so many of these people don't even know you. But Lord, we thank you that this has turned into an opportunity for them to come to know you. We thank you for these ministries, Lord, like World Mission, Lord, that have taken these 200 families, Lord, and provided them with all the necessities. They don't just do it just to do it, just to be kind. They do it in Jesus' name. So that reflects back to you because that's what our goal is, Lord. We're your servants. We want our lives and everything we do to reflect back to you in an honorable and wonderful way. So we just pray that you'll continue to bless what they're doing there, Lord, with all the tragedies, we just ask you to bless their efforts. Father God, we thank you for those soldiers who have said, I'm not gonna do these, I'm not gonna commit these atrocities, these officers. Thank you, Lord, we ask your hand of protection to be upon them and bless them, Lord God, Lord, for seeking peace and ultimately for seeking you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, that's really important. Now, if you have uh, information from a country or some place around the world, maybe it's the USA or whatever that's government related or whatever, then we need to focus on that. You're gonna find it here. Uh, this prayer meeting on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 3.30 to 4.30, that's what you're gonna find here. So if you wanna be, you know, I, you, you search for things. And when you search for things, Bing and some of the other, they don't put them up front because they, they put them in the back. See, a lot of people don't know that. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, so don't worry. But I do know how the system works, and I'm in the process all the time. Uh, let me tell you something. We have four people that work on the Internet for us, and it's full focus. Um, that's what we do, and that's what we say. So we work on that all the time. And maybe what we'll do is, uh, Matt, we, we have some things I'm going to talk to you about next week. We, we have Bible Discovery Studios' website which we have not promoted, um, but we do six programs out of here right now, uh, out of these studios. This is one of them, but we do six programs here, and uh, we're getting ready to do more. 
and the Lord has opened up the doors, and we are, we're just saying, Lord, we've got to do this, but we're very careful on what we do and very careful on what we produce. So you're going to see programming continue to come out of here. It begins with Bible Discovery TV. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. And then we go into Bible Basics with Ryan Hembry. Then we go into Corey's wrap-up uh, challenge. Actually, wrap-up is already being produced and it's already on our network. And so I want to tell you that Bible Discovery, or BD, Family and Friends, BD, Family and Friends, is how you find it on Roku Channel or uh, Fire TV, but, uh, or Google Television, whatever you want. But that's important. It's also on our website. And this is your, we're on Bible Discovery TV right now. And so um, this is a network which we air all our programs on. We're still getting together some of the other programs. So anyway, Saturday night you can see At the Cross, which is a great program from 11 o'clock until 1 in the morning, Saturday to Sunday. It's the transition between Saturday and Sunday, between the original uh, day of uh, uh, rest day, Sabbath, Shabbat, to the day of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's, you know, that's what we do there. And uh, Corbell Peters is an excellent host. He's a great guy, and he talks to people on the phone and all that stuff. It's a lot of fun. And he's in here live. He's live on Saturday night from 11 o'clock till 1 a.m. So you should, if you're up that late, you should tune in and check it out. And then, of course, Corey and Matlock do record their uh, Bible wrap-up every week. And we put all the weeks on during the week and then on the weekend we put them on uh, as well. They're not live, but that's important. Of course, this program is live from 3.30 to 4.30, so hi, how are you doing? We're live today. And uh, it becomes very important to hear you, and of course, people watch this in the background as well. Uh, but anyway, these are programs that these programs, these Bible programs, are something that we're going to put on the Bible Discovery Family and Friends Network. And we got a new program. We taped eight programs, and we just finished one. And we, we've got to get eight of them done. Jess Kennel on This Is Israel. It's an Israeli program. And I'll, I'll just say this, okay? And, you know, my wife gets concerned with me saying too much. But I can tell you that we are working on something. God did it uh, two months ago, and we're working on it. And he's got an office here, the Israel Video Project. And... Frankly, we've got an office over there, and the office is not in Tel Aviv. It's in Jerusalem, the, the city where God's name is. And it's all coming together. That's all I'm going to say, but it's all coming together, and we'll put it together. It's going to be very exciting, and uh, I'm telling you, it's really exciting. So anyway, there you go. Uh, we need to pray for this. Uh, there's good things God is doing, and then there's other things. You shake your head, and you say, what, what are they doing? And so we need to pray for the shaking head things of what are they doing? And I, I look at all of the political structure uh, in the United States of America, and I, I didn't grow up in that country. I, it's not a country I grew up in now. I don't recognize it. So uh, we need to pray for that, and we need to pray that God helps them. And the Roe versus Wade release of this, uh, it was released beforehand. The Democrats did it to try to gauge everybody to make an effort at the midterm elections because they basically lost the midterm elections in November. So they're trying to gain an effort. Uh, and they do that by releasing, well, this is what's going to happen. And they release it. And, you know, we got to pray for this. And we Rob, do you mind if I comment them. on that real quick? Go ahead. Yeah, you know, what's, you know what's interesting is that was just a draft, so it really wasn't a law at that point. And what's really interesting is it uh, all it does is turn it over to the states. So here in the United States, the 50 states to uh, regulate that and make those law themselves. So likely, unfortunately, abortion will likely continue. It just will be governed statewide. So not every state is going to allow it, but there will be states that allow it. So it's not that abortion, unfortunately, is not being ended. It's just being given over to the states. Now, a, another really good thing is there was a, I can't say here, but there was a law that was passed federally in 2015 that is a clear abomination before God that also might be turned over to the states. And I pray that happens as well. I think most of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, and I, by the way, we're on, 
I, I think we can say we're on, I don't know if I can say the, the other platform, but R-U-M-B-L-E. Uh, we just started oh, yeah. uploading that that platform. We're on that platform. We're on. We make the decision carefully, and we're on Rumble, and uh, so it is great. And if you if you're on Rumble, it's easy to get a hold of on your phone. It's easy to get a hold of on your computer. <laughs> just go to Rumble and look Bible Discovery TV up, and we're right there, live on Rumble. So you'll anyway. There you go. Uh, our Bible Discovery TV. Uh, VOD is there, and we're going to try to get this network up. But that's, we're, we're working on that. But Bible Discovery TV program is there as well. Okay, very good. We need to pray. Father, I pray for what's going on in the U.S. There's a lot of desperate attempts being made, and a lot of people have placed all of their, all of their work and their future in the idea that the government has to change. But, Lord, that's not the case. You know, this, we, we live in a democracy. And the, the nation is divided, not because of what they people think, but because of how people believe. How we believe. And Lord, when I grew up, we were divided, but it, it hasn't been this bad in a long time after two years of pandemic, and now we're in a year of war. It's not, I don't know, it's not going to get easier, Lord. So we pray in Jesus' name that you would help us be with us, be with the Christians in the United States of America. Uh, be with them and touch them, Lord, that the country is uh, a country that affects a lot of other countries. And we pray, God, that you would help us. Go ahead and pray, Matt, and then, Rachel, you pray. Go ahead, Matt. Lord, uh, amidst all this, Lord, we pray for revival. Lord, it's so hard to see this young generation come up, Lord, and it's one of the only generations that, Lord, generations past, if they didn't know you, they at least knew about you. Lord, this, this Generation Z, many of them don't even know about you, Lord God. And, and they're being taught, Lord, things that are just completely diametrically opposed to your word. So we pray for their rescue. We pray for revival. Lord, we have been keeping watch. Lord, your Bible told, told us to keep watch for these days. And boy, it, it does look. Lord, like we're in the end days, but Lord, we do pray for, Lord, uh, at least a final revival. Lord, we would love to see one more spark of righteousness rise up in the United States. I would love to see that, Lord God. Uh, but Lord, ultimately, we pray your will be done. Lord, whatever will bring more people to the cross, we pray that, Lord. We pray for that. We just pray that you will guide. We pray that you will move upon the Supreme Court. We ask you to move upon the governors of the different states, Heavenly Father. And we just give you thanks and praise for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Go ahead and pray, Rachel. And Lord, I thank you so much for, <clears throat> sorry, the work that you are doing and, and the work that where you are moving. And, you know, even in this Roe versus Wade situation, I think for many people, it seems so finite. And so even you working in this is an answer to many, many prayers. And Lord, we pray that that you will continue to work on the hearts of those mothers, to work on the hearts of those, to, to work on the systems that the church could better support these single mothers or these mothers with unplanned pregnancies, that, that, that as a church, we would wake up and we would step up and we would be involved. And and, and helping where sometimes they feel they have no other choice. And I just really pray, Lord, that, that your hand will just be continuing to move. And I, I thank you, Lord, that you do not leave us hopeless, that you do not leave us in despair as we look around us and we see war and we see famine and we see death and we see uh, political wars and we see separation and disunity among families and brokenness everywhere. And yet at the same time, we can see Christ on the cross risen again and knowing that he is our savior and that he is our lord and i thank you so much that as christians we have that hope that the world so desperately needs help us lord to be bold don't we don't want to be shy we can't be shy now now is not the time for us to back down or not to speak but now is the time for us to share you with our families and our loved ones and those that you put in our path with opportunities to tell them about you and i thank you so much that we have the ability to do that and I ask, Lord, that you will make us bold in that, in whatever way it is that you have called us to do. Let us not miss any opportunity that you put before us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Very good. Um, 
one of the things that I need to say, uh, Eric, and you're having a conversation with Diane. Yeah, it's the the we are on Facebook and YouTube. We always have been, but I I we watched Rumble for some time, and uh, and I've done a lot of tests with them, and uh, I feel that we are. Uh, let me just say it this way: uh, we we've got a we we are paying a very specific attention to a number of companies. Uh, on in the internet uh, with the internet and uh, one of the companies we were paying close attention to was rumble so we're on rumble which tends to be a more conservative uh, feed it's a lot like YouTube or a lot like Facebook um, and it's it's actually we're on Facebook and we're on YouTube and we thank Facebook and YouTube for letting us be on there but we put the programs on rumble and our goal is to try to get this live program on, the, on Rumble as well. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we've just got to do some things there. But again, I want to say that if you want to watch us live without any interference, you can also go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com, click on prayer, and follow the link. We're, we're right there, and we're live, and we're on Bible Discovery TV family and friends right there. We're on Roku, we're on Fire Chat, we're on Fire Talk, we're on Google TV. All of it is, we own that, so all of it, we're on that. So the promotion of what we do and what we teach in God's Word is very interesting because we have some people who, they don't want to censor the Bible, and so we end up getting promoted, but or not promoted, but we end up, they let us on, but they like to keep us at a low level. So it's, it's just very interesting. Uh, so anyway, uh, there you go. All right, uh, we need to get to our prayer request. Uh, I want to say four things, but I can't say them. Um, anyway, when I'm Wednesday, next Wednesday, when I'm on our Bible Discovery TV, and uh, if you're on Facebook or YouTube or Rumble, you're welcome to join us on Bible Discovery TV if you're an agent and you want to figure out what we're doing. Uh, but I'll tell you about it Wednesday when we go off Facebook and, and YouTube and we go further on the Wednesday uh, Ask the Pastor question. Very good. Okay. What is our first prayer request, Rebecca? Rachel. But Diane sorry, says I'm prayers sorry. for... Rachel. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I'm so used to it. It doesn't even bug me. Diane says prayers for Marie in France. Her son is hurtful with his words towards her and is telling her she will no longer receive photos of her two granddaughters out of sight. I do not know what is going on, but Marie is hurt and needs prayers. I do not know if she's received the Lord, but her faith in God has strengthened. Pray for her salvation too, and of her sons as well. Thank you. All right, and this is Maria, and uh, we want to pray, everybody, if, we'll, if you'll gather around in your thoughts and your mind, Maria, this is the person we're praying for, and I will pray for her. Father, we ask for Maria that, first of all, you would get a hold of her. We, we're not sure what's going on or what's happening, but you are sure. And she's come to the subject of our prayer. So we hold up Maria. We say, Father, this is an individual who needs to know you. She needs to see you. She needs to understand you. That's first. That's first. Help her to know you, Lord. Help her to see your mercy and your abundant grace and how you save us and change us. And I pray, Lord, that she would pray the sinner's prayer and get saved. Now, Father, uh, I understand because I'm also a grandparent. And I love my grandkids. I tell you with all my heart, I love them. And I every day I pray for them. From the moment I know that they're conceived to the moment I actually pray for my grandkids before they're conceived. And I say, Lord, whatever kids we have, may they come to know you. May they understand you. May you protect them and keep them. And Lord, I pray that for her kids, her grandkids, that you would open up their lives, her kids' lives, so that she could see her grandkids and repair that family, Lord. Do a work. May God move in there and do an amazing work in Jesus' wonderful name. And we said together, amen and amen. And Maria is prayed for by all of us, all of us. Uh, so that's really great. Excellent. Next prayer request. Go ahead. Janice says, hi, everyone. Pray for my aunt. Her name is Grace. She's asking for protection for her in both the spiritual and the natural. And that's Janice for Grace. Yes. Uh, 
and I, I assume then that she knows the Lord. So, Matt, pray for grace. Lord God, um, we don't know what the situation is, Father God, that she would be praying for protection both in the physical and spiritual, but Lord, you do. So we pray, Lord God, that you will grant grace this protection, Father God, as only you can, because only you can protect her in the spiritual Heavenly Father. So we just pray that um, you will speak to her heart, give her wisdom and discernment. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you will station angels around her as a hedge of protection. Guide her, Lord God. Draw her close to you during this time, we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very good. I, I think it's important that you get your names of the people who don't know the Lord. And uh, if you could grab them and put, you should always come with that by your computer. But get the names. I Like I put mine on my phone and cover them. And in Jesus' name, Father, I pray. And we pray together, the prayer partners pray together for all the people who need to know you. This is not the time to mess around. We are not messing around. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would help them to know you. Help them to know you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, capture their minds and capture their hearts, Lord. That's really what we need to see happen. And you know, sometimes, Lord, we're in the way. So, Father, help us not to get in the way, but these are names of people that we know, and we need them to know you, Lord, because you are not willing that any perish, so we're praying in God's will. We know that. But at the same time, Lord, we understand they have a free will. Help them, Lord. Go ahead and pray, Matt. Yes, Father God, we, uh, we pray that you will, and I just ask everyone who's, uh, who's part of the meeting right now, speak forth those names and declare them for the Lord. Father God, we lift them before you, and we just pray, Lord God, that you will do whatever it takes. Heavenly Father, Lord, you know what it's going to take, Lord, for some of these to come to you. Some of these, Lord God, to be humbled and, and hit their knees, Lord, where they've got no other place to turn but to the cross. So, Lord, for the sake, Lord, of their salvation, we pray that you will take them as far as they need to go. Not beyond that point, Lord Jesus, we pray, but as far as they need to go, Lord to recognize you and turn their hearts and lives completely over to you. Father, we thank you. You are such a wonderful, grace-filled, loving God. Lord, better than we could ever ask for or expect. And we just say thank you, Lord. We place them in your loving arms in Jesus' name. Rachel, go ahead and pray. Lord, I thank you so much for your working hands. And I thank you so much that you bring people to repentance and you convict us, that you don't leave us in our sin, you don't leave us in our hopeless state, but through the conviction of your Holy Spirit, you can bring us to repentance and how great, true repentance pleases you. And and we're so grateful to, for the redemption that your son brings. And our heart is for our loved ones. We know the urgency. We know we can sense that, that now is the time to come to salvation that we can't wait. And so I pray, Lord, that for our loved ones, for maybe even acquaintances that we might know or that you are putting on our heart, even as we pray this, Lord. I pray that you will help them, that you will reach them in the way that only you know how is you formed each and every one of them so specifically. And will you just meet them where they are today, Lord? Will you convict them and bring them to repentance and let them find the joy and the hope that Jesus brings? Now is such an easy time to see the difference and that we as Christians would also display that and be your witnesses, be good witnesses for you in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Uh, look, we, we do a program called Bible Discovery TV, which we take you through the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. You know, it's a, this page, this uh, book, uh, the Bible, 66 books written by the 40 authors over uh, 1,500 years, yet all with the same theme. I, I love it. And uh, this particular book is 1,426 pages long. Now, that's a long book. And we don't read this book over a course of a month or a week or a day. Or you don't do that uh, because this book is deep. And I've read through it more than 32 times. And I want to say that as we read this Bible, we come to it and we say, Lord, we're going to read three chapters a day or four chapters a day. And then I'm going to focus on one of 15 verses, 15 or less verses per day of what we discovered. And that's the Bible Discovery TV program. Now, that program prints a guide, and the guide also does the same thing I do on the program, takes 15 verses around, 
and we talk three points, we present three points of what those verses tell us. And the idea is that we teach the whole Bible. That's our goal. We have to teach the whole Bible. We've been doing this for 32 years. And every year we do it, it gets more exciting. And this year is very exciting. Uh, when we just finished taping, my kids, I, I want to tell you something. I have three kids. And uh, when, when they were born to me, I was excited, you know. And uh, my kids were young. And Ryan was 10 years old and Corey was, what was she, seven? when Brandon was born, and that's when we started this ministry, and I, I just remember, not, not when we started it, but when we full-time got into it, and I, I remember uh, that in those days, I just prayed that my kids would have good jobs and be able to do what God wanted them to do. Well, I tell you, I'm not going to get emotional. I'll tell you something. I was really surprised really surprised when they wanted to work here. And I'll tell you something else. Their spouses want to work here too. So I don't know what to say. God blesses. And I didn't even ask for that. And, and I, I think because they're my kids. I mean, it's awesome. Uh, this ministry will continue. Even if something happens to me and I'm no more, you can Rest be assured, this ministry will continue. We've got three kids in here and their wives uh, and their husbands uh, doing the job, I'm telling you right now. So praise God. You can get a hold of these programs on our website at BibleDiscoveryTV.com, BibleDiscoveryTV.com, or you can get a hold of uh, our kids at uh, Corey Babechko on the YouTube channel, Corey Babechko or Ryan Hembry. Uh, and my, my other son, Brandon, he doesn't, he doesn't like to be in front of camera or anything. But, but I'm telling you, Brandon's not here. I'm telling you, he is, I, I think he's, anyway. Anyway, let me just stop there. But uh, I believe that God will, will help you. But if you want the programs, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and you can find it. Uh, it's very, very good. All right, let's go on to the next prayer request. Go ahead. Sure, and just quickly, actually, if you guys are part of Church 365, you guys know that we have been doing some podcasts, and one of our upcoming podcasts is actually going to have Corey, Ryan, and Brandon on uh, with me just to chat a little bit about, you know, what they kind of remember from Bible Discovery TV and when they kind of were like, no, this is what we're doing, this is what we're called to. So if you're curious a little bit more of their stories, we're actually going into that uh, probably in the next few months, which is pretty exciting. And let me just say this, that Bible uh, or, or uh, three, Church 365 was your idea, Rachel, and I think that is awesome. Uh, and the idea was to develop uh, questions so you get the digital Bible guide and you get the questions and the workings around it. So if you have a Bible study of some sort, one person or two persons then, or ten persons or whatever, then you can develop your study around these questions and around these comments. And that's exactly what Church 365 is. And what you've done, Rachel, is just enhanced it. Uh, and this year it's, it's enhanced again with these live podcasts. How many we've done? Three of them so far this year? Uh, we've done four so far. We're hopefully doing our fifth in a few weeks. So, I mean, you know, this is really, really interesting stuff. And if you want to get further uh, for Church 365 and all that, you have to go to the website, BibleDiscoveryTV.com, and, uh, and you can get a hold of us there and do all of that. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead. All right. Tammy is so faithful to remind us to be continuing to pray for Lori. Please pray for strength and balance for her feet and pray for her diabetes. Okay, Matt, pray for Lori. Pray for her. Lord God, uh, we pray that you'll minister to Lori. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to bring circulation to that body, Lord, for those feet. Lord God, we just pray for answers. We pray for a miraculous touch upon her, Lord God. And uh, we just ask you, Lord, to minister to Lori today, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. By the way, I got a message here from uh, Kathleen uh, who says, Matt, how is your smell or taste uh, looking back? Is it is it coming back yet? Oh, it's funny. I was just typing an answer, Rod, when you asked me to pray. So, uh, yeah, it's Caitlin. And uh, 
Alicia's daughter. It's, um, you know, if I had to per, put a percentage on it, I would say 15, 20%. I'm getting just a little, which a little is better than none. So I've got just a little bit of smell, a little bit of taste, but you know, uh, like I said, a little bit is better than none. And I think it's going to come back. So. All right. Well, we're going to pray for that father in Jesus name. I pray that his taste and his smell would come back in Jesus name. We, we know your Holy Spirit heals. And uh, we understand that you do amazing things. So he needs it back. So help him to get it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. By the way, uh, church365 at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. C-H-U-R-C-H 365 at BibleDiscoveryTV.com is the web or the email that you can uh, mail us and find out more. So that's really, really good. Okay, uh, next prayer request. Go ahead. Diane says, prayers for my son's new job trucking. He starts May the 14th. Prayers that he will find fulfillment in that and that the Lord will fill him with his peace as he needs peace in his life. He is a Christian, and thank you. Praise God. Father, we pray for the son, and he's got this new trucking job. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch him and help him. Help him to find a good worship station if he's got satellite radio, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's that good station. And, and Father, in Jesus' name, he needs to know and he needs to, to discover the truth. Help him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Help him to do well and make it strong, Father. Thank you, Lord. And, and I always say in Jesus' name because that name is the strongest name in the universe and beyond. It's the strongest name ever. And uh, I can tell you, by the way, this life and this reality and this universe is very short. Uh, compared to God, one day, a thousand years like one day. Let me tell you, it's not, it's not a long, drawn-out thing like a lot of scientists like to say, but that's another story for another day. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead. All right. Um, this person is on YouTube, and their username is ncolt, and they say, please pray that my husband doesn't give up and that he can find work that pleases God and supports our family. And she also asks, please remember my daughter with spinal deformity and for a second opinion in July, also for her surgery in August. Okay, Father, we pray for the daughter. Help her, Lord, to know you. She has to know you, Lord. She has to really know you. And I pray, Father, that you would touch her spine. I understand what this is. And I pray, Father, that you would help her. And uh, in Jesus' name, I, look, I, I know, Lord, you heal because you've healed me several times. And I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would heal her and touch her. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Now, Matt, pray for the husband. Father God, uh, I just pray, Lord, uh, first, I just uh, I go by your leading, Lord. Uh, we rebuke the spirit of depression, Lord, from this man. Lord God, uh, a lot of times, Lord, uh, as husband and men, we tie, Lord, our, ourselves to our work and, and uh, put our value there, Lord God. I pray that he would place his value in his relationship with you, Lord God, as a servant of Christ. I pray that his value would be seen there, Lord, and I pray that you would lift him up. Father, give him the encouragement and open the door, Lord God, for him to have just the right job. Lord, not only a job just to have a job, but a job, Lord, that uh, Lord would, would be a fulfillment, Lord, for him. Lord, for everything that his family needs, Lord, that it was it would supply all their needs, Lord, and he would be blessed there, and Lord, he would be a blessing there, Lord, to those around him, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, very good. You know, one of the things that we do and we're going to do on uh, in the upcoming days, on the, I think it is the uh, week of, the midweek, second week in June, uh, which would be, let me get my calendar out and I'll tell you exactly the days, uh, which will be the Monday the 13th to Friday the 17th. That's when we're on the air. But actually the week is the 12th, which is the Sunday to the Saturday, which is the 18th, 12th to the 18th of June. Um, this is, we're going we're gonna to join with uh, Next City Church, which is Kevin Bateman's church. He's the associate pastor there, a senior pastor, Pastor Dom. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, adopt uh, well, not adopt. We're going to pray for kids, children that week. We've learned that there is a strong, how do I put this? When you 
when you pray for something and it gets results like that, it, it usually t speaks that those results come simply because that issue is not completely decided. And uh, this is for children to be saved. Uh, Love Life is the organization, lovelife.org, I think it is. What it, whatever they put the, the link up there for Love Life. Love Life is a great ministry. And they're in Charlotte, North Carolina. I used to live in Charlotte. They're in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, it is a great ministry. And that's something that uh, we need to pray for. So, Father, I pray that you would help us in that week. And I pray up to that week that you would make people aware of this, especially when we're talking about abortion right now. But this is the way that people speak and people talk to uh, you about the unborn because this Lord is how you present the answers to our problem and so help us Lord the enemy he wants to destroy and kill but you want us to live and be strong so help us Lord in Jesus name amen and the HTTPS lovelife.org lovelife.org that's the name of the organization and we want to make sure I'm going to just say yes to that and we want to make sure that uh, that you pay attention to that because we're all praying for love life. I'm going to pray for the people next week when we get on Wednesday when we get Kevin in. He's going to pray for the people, but we love love life, and they have a great ministry. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead, Alicia. Prayers for my friend Monica. She has asthma and is sick. She has a horrible cough, and her inhalers are not helping. She's using her nebulizer every few hours. Also pray for two of her daughters who are questioning God because of their medical issues. One is a teenager, the other is in her 20s. Prayer for them not to lose their faith in Jesus. You know, there's a lot, I'm gonna ask you to pray, Rachel, but there's a lot of people who uh, question God when things go wrong. And the, the Bible says that if you serve God, if you love the Lord and you're af looking after and you're trying to reach him, He's going to make things help you. He's going to make you stronger than whatever evils are in this world. We live on a sin-cursed planet. We live on this planet which is cursed by sin. Matt, do you understand we live in a sin-cursed planet? Yeah, we do, Rod. And, you know, life is a roller coaster. It's If you haven't gone through a hard time, and I don't say this to discourage you, you're going to. But you know what? You can go through it alone or you can go through it with God and have him help you get out of it. And uh, the old saying, it's not really a Christian saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. There is truth to that, but I would rather go with God than without it. Of course, and that's exactly what we say. So I'm going to ask you to pray, Rachel. They've got to know Jesus. Alicia, they've got to know Jesus. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. That's who they have to know. So let's pray with Rachel, everybody who's listening to me and who's watching me, they've got to know Jesus. Go ahead. Lord, I thank you so much for Monica and her family. And we just bring her before you, Lord, for healing, uh, for this, this, this persistent cough and this issue with having to take her inhalers and nebulizers. And I just pray healing over her, Lord, and that you will encourage her even in this time, even as we're praying that she would feel your encouragement and your presence around her. And we lift up her two daughters, to you going through medical issues at a young age. And Lord, we pray for um, for your peace to come upon them and that they will choose to love you in spite of this and that they will not see this as uh, your uncaring self, but in a way that you actually bring us so much closer to you through these trials and through these tribulations. And and I thank you, Father, that you can heal them and, and that you are working in their lives right now. And I just pray that they will see with such clarity the presence of the Holy Spirit and the comfort of Jesus and that they would hide under the shelter of your wings in a way that only you can provide. And, and like Matt said, that when we can walk with you, we are just so much stronger. So I pray for both of them that they will not turn away but draw even closer to you in this time and that you will heal and help them even in their day-to-day -day tasks that it would not be too difficult for them and that you will help them with everything that they are going through and we just lift this family up to you we put them in your hands knowing that you are a capable and a loving God that sees them and that cares for them in Jesus name amen now listen to me carefully because this is really something um, I heard from love life and from the people there that they did uh, some surveys, and they did a really interesting survey, and they asked the women, 
who were on their way to the abortion clinic, well, you know, where's the man? And the man took off. He split. What? Absolutely. He split. He's gone. And uh, they asked the women, well, if the man was here, would you go through with this? And they said, 90, 90%. I'm using a low figure. They said it was 99%, but I, 90% said I would keep the baby. This is not a women's right issue. Gentlemen, I just need to tell you, Father, we need, we need the Holy Spirit to touch the men. They've got to stop it. They've got to stop it, Lord. They've got to zip up their pants and stop it until they get married. Lord, the marriage covenant is promoted by your word. And there's a reason it's called marriage. The two shall become one. Jesus said the two shall become one. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name. I know that marriage is hard, but at the same time, I understand, Lord, and I get it, that marriage is the reason for having children. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to see that. And Lord, I pray that the men would stand up and be real men and touch the men. Father, they got to come to know the Lord and they got to take responsibility. And they got to get married and they got to put a family together, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Really, really important. Really important. We need to go back to the main reason for that. Okay, uh, next prayer request. Go ahead. All right. Um, sorry, let me just get to it here. <laughs> Our Skype gets a little uh, convoluted with many messages going back and forth. Alicia says, I'm going out on a limb with a praise report and prayer. Last night, Ray and uh, Ray and Paula prayed for me regarding oral thrush, which has caused swallowing issues for me in the last three weeks. I'm swallowing better today, praise God. Prayers for complete healing and that I will not need the prescription from the doctor. She said I could try changing my diet first for a few days. I'm trying low sugar yogurt drink. Yeah, that's important. I just want to say that we need to make sure that we praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for all the healing that you're doing and continue to do, and we praise your holy name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Matt, we need to continue to praise the Lord. Yeah, I mean, we can... <laughs> You know what, we can, Rod, we all know this, I believe. We can praise the Lord anytime, can't we? I mean, we're, here we are. We're part of this prayer meeting. We're still on earth. That means we're, we still have an opportunity to serve God. And uh, so, and we all have a call, believe it or not. Every single one of you listening has a call on your life. So praise God. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And let me just say something. Matt was talking about probiotics here. Uh, yeah, my, my uh, father-in-law takes that. And uh, they have helped him tremendously. Uh, and probiotics are very important. But God heals and God helps us, Lord. We praise your name and we thank you for the healing power in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Next prayer request. Go ahead. Wenda says, hello from Pinoca, Alberta. Please pray that peace will descend soon over Ukraine and for comfort and strength for the Ukrainian people and their leaders. Yeah, let me just report to you about that. Uh, we have uh, Amar who said uh, he's talking about Israel and some of the things they've done there. But the Ukraine general staff reported that Russia has lost another ship. The MP from Odessa and local m media outlets claim that it is the Russian Navy patrol ship Admiral Mekarov and the uh, Admiral Grigorovich class frigate so they lost another one and father i pray in jesus name that you would help them this war is no good lord it's no good it's no good it's no good help them and father i pray for putin that you would touch him lord he needs to come to know you and lord this has got to stop i pray for Zelensky. he needs to know you lord and this has got all this has got to stop and I'm not into conspiracy theories, and I'm not into this one or that one. I'm not promoting men. But, Lord, I know when war comes out, James chapter 4 tells me it starts in the heart. And the heart starts, and it, it becomes a problem. And, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would help us to govern ourselves well and stop this war in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. We need to stop. We don't need to go to war again. 
ever. But that's just how I feel, and that's I pretty much feel I'm right. And uh, if you don't, I mean, if you feel I'm right, you can type it. But I tell you, it's we need to not have war. Very, very important. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead. Matt, my neighbor Billy that has that had colon cancer surgery five months ago is having trouble swallowing and may need surgery. He's a Christian and he's in his 70s. Colon cancer surgery is such a terrible thing. Uh, and uh, Father, we pray that the cancer would stop. This is just, and, and I understand he's older, but Lord, help him. If he doesn't know you, help him to know you. Help his spirit to be woken up inside of him, Lord, because he needs to know you. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. I, I tell you, that, that's, you know, I, that's really important. How many of you remember Pastor Don Fitchett? <clears throat> he used to be here on Mondays. And he had uh, pancreatic cancer, just got him, real, took him out in a month. It was just incredible. And But you know what? Uh, he said he was ready to go, but he knew that God had, had called him and directed him. And so we pray that God would touch him. He was 89. We pray that God would touch him and heal him. And uh, God did. He's in heaven right now. He's with the Lord. God has totally healed him, and I can't wait to see him again when we get to heaven. So <laughs> it'll be really, really interesting. Heaven is more real than this life ever thought about being real. So that's important. One more prayer request before we have to go. Go ahead. A Rosie has a lovely prayer request asking for prayer for our granddaughter. She is in labor with our first great-grandchild, praying that all goes well, feeling so blessed. I will keep you posted, and happy Mother's Day to all you special moms. Father God, we pray for Rosie, touch her, Lord, and uh, help her. And the grandchild, oh my goodness, Father, this is just a great <clears throat> blessing. And I pray, Father, that you would be with her, help everything to go well, uh, and help the labor to go well, and help it all to happen well, in Jesus' name. And uh, be with her tonight. Amen. And amen. That's, that's really interesting. And it's not her grandchild, it's her great-grandchild. Yeah, I thought I said that, but if I didn't, I'm sorry. It's her great grandchild. That's right. Her great grand. That's amazing. Wow. That's something. All right. Very good. Uh, listen, Matt, uh, you're sending out the email quickly, aren't you? Yeah, I'll send it out after this uh, after this meeting's over, and uh, it'll go right out. And any of them that we didn't get to any prayer requests, we didn't get to this time Wednesday. We didn't get to two pages worth. Those will be in the email. Forty three people get it. It's a wonderful thing. And you know what? Before we go off, I want to say thank you to the moms. I, I pray in Jesus' name you have a blessed Mother's Day because you are so important. And uh, just pray you're blessed. Yeah, it's really true. And uh, I want to say that Rachel is a mom. And uh, it's just really fun to see her kids. Ezra is the guy I listen to. He's a great boy. He's excellent. And on Wednesday night, I listened to him, and as you, you're teaching him the scripture well, Rachel. So thank you. And Father, we pray for all the mothers, including Rachel, that you would touch them and help them this day to see that the Lord Jesus Christ is their hope for all their children. In Jesus' name, amen. Rachel, um, you want me to say anything now? Oh, well, I will say that Ezra super looks forward to his Wednesday nights with Pastor Rod to tell him his verses, and his goal is to say them as fast as possible. And he's, he will time, he'll be like, Mommy, you need to time it on your phone because I got to try and say these. And he's four, he's almost five, but that's been such a blessing. And it's an amazing thing in the church when the older can help with the younger kids and, you know, and just grow those relationships. That's a really special thing. And I know for a lot of people, Mother's Day can also be difficult. You know, maybe you're longing for children. Maybe you've lost a child. Maybe your relationship with your mom isn't what you want it to be. So we're thinking and praying for everybody there too. Yeah, that's right. We need to pray for all of the prayer requests uh, from moms. And mom, I'll tell you something. All I can say, my mom's still alive and she's amazing. She has a skateboard ministry in Ajo, Pennsylvania. Can you believe that? And they're, they're doing well. She teaches music and uh, they're doing well. So praise God just amazing so i'll be calling my mom and saying happy mother's day to her too so that is really good so may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you as he writes his name on your life this week god bless you go in the peace and the grace of jesus christ see you later you are not alone over
over 10 million Americans struggle with mental illness. Find hope. Go to BibleComfortForMentalHealth.com for free resources to give you hope for tomorrow. Radiant TV.